Hey guys, Mr. O'Leary here, uh, coming at you pre-recorded from my living room. Um, I miss you guys. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, please reach out if you just want to say hi. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about holding some um, Zoom conferences uh, later this week and, and, and next week for sure. So uh, yeah, reach out. Let's get in touch. Let's talk. Um, miss you guys. Uh, this video, we're going to be talking about foreign policy. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about like what it is, um, how the U.S. carries out theirs, uh, things of that nature. So let's get started. So what is foreign policy? Um, you might commonly hear it as foreign affairs as well, but essentially foreign policy is how a country uh, will develop a strategy and how it's going to interact with the rest of the outside world. Um, which is really different than a lot of the policies and laws that we looked at earlier this year. Um, the law, those kind of laws were more domestic, uh, meaning they had more to do with what was going on inside of the country. So two good examples that I like to look at. Um, one, domestic policy. That might be like when the U.S. Civil Rights Act got passed. And, you know, the U.S. was really trying to promote and enforce uh, – social equality throughout inside the country, right? Now, that's much different than something like when the United States adopted containment, right? So after World War II, the Soviet Union, they had that Iron Curtain. They um, tried to separate the Eastern Bloc of European countries, and they were spreading communism throughout Europe. Now, containment was the United States' reaction to that. They wanted to contain communism because the U.S. wants to spread democracy. All right. Uh, we're not going to get totally into all that right now, um, but that is one goal of the United States um, foreign policy to spread democracy throughout the world. Um, but yeah, so that's basically the difference between foreign policy and domestic. Also, I just want you to note that countries' foreign policies uh, change throughout their history and really can shift at any time um, for a variety of different reasons, right? Um, I like to be anecdotal and, and, and use real examples. Um, so right now, right, a lot of our foreign policy might have shifted when we had corona or the COVID virus. Um, you know, we weren't trading as much with Italy. Um, you know, flights were changing and, and things of that nature. So it can, it can really shift depending on uh, what's happening in the world. So where does foreign policy uh, come from? How is it created? Um, so the two branches that are directly involved in creating foreign policy are the executive branch and the legislative. So the executive. Um, the president is going to sign or create treaties. Uh, you know, it can have to do with war. But also, you know, you create treaties all the time with like NAFTA, um, you know, just a trade or, or commercial treaty. It doesn't always have to be war. Um, the president's also going to assign ambassadors. Uh, they get to appoint the secretary of state. OK, and that's a really, really pivotal, um, crucial job. OK, really important people have um, held that position. You know, you have William Seward. He was with Lincoln. Um, you know, Hillary Clinton has served. John Kerry. Um, yeah, fun fact, uh, and I think it's on a different slide, but about six people that have served that position have uh, gone on to become the president. So that's pretty cool. Um, as we know, the president is the commander in chief, so they're head of the military. Um, so that would get involved in foreign policy if, if there's, you know, a war or maybe some territorial dispute. Um, and overall, the president is the chief diplomat or the head representative of the country. So, you know. You've probably seen in the news and media, uh, Trump shaking hands with um, other presidents and, and things like that. Now, for the legislative branch, uh, you have Congress. So con Congress actually uh, confirms the treaties. Um, you know, they have to approve it, those treaties that are created by the president. Um, they also get to declare war. So the president is supposed to go to Congress, um, ask for approval. And uh, Congress gets to, you know, approve or decline. Uh, Congress also provides money for these sort of goals that the U.S. might have. 
um, for instance, the U.S. is actually the biggest provider of aid to all countries throughout the world. And um, that has to go directly through Congress, right? And, and actually, probably more so uh, the House, right? Because we talked about earlier in the year that the House has the power of the purse. And uh, lastly, for Congress, and, and there's probably a few more roles too, but um, yeah, Congress will confirm ambassadors and the Secretary of State. So that's more check and balancing. Um, the president gets to try and pick and assign and appoint, and Congress says um, yay or nay, right? Um, so Congress is checking the uh, executive branch. Um Getting more specific and in, in, in detail with the Secretary of State position, um, you should know that the Secretary of State is actually the head of the State Department, and there's over ten thousand jobs in 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 that department. So it's it's a pretty big deal. Um, remember, ambassadors, right? Ambassadors are part of the State Department, so these people actually live in foreign countries and they work over there. They um, work at a headquarters called embassies and embassies are, are located, you know, around the world. Um, we actually, th we were talking about one in January, right? When um, I believe it was I I Iranians attacking um, the, I the Iraq embassy with Americans in it. And that's what inevitably led to um, the killing of the Iranian general. So it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, to kind of look at it and, and see that, you know, we see this stuff in the news all the time. Um, remember that uh, the Secretary of State, as well as, you know, the State Department in general, are responsible for conducting diplomacy with foreign nations. Um, the U.S. interacts with, um, you know, over 100 different nations. So, and, and, and each relationship can be unique. So, foreign policy, there, there's many different Okay, it's not just one. And then there's that fun fact that I was telling you about. Um, if you look over at the um, picture on the right, that's John Kerry. He was the Secretary of State to Obama during a second term. Um, and if you just look at his job description, right, he advises the president on foreign policy, represents the U.S. abroad and, and international organizations, um, and negotiates agreements with foreign countries. So it's really important um, to recognize the U S is being represented elsewhere. Um, so you need really competent, um, people in office, not only as an ambassador, but, um, as a president, right? Cause the president gets to assign these people. You need, um, you need to have really good, uh, representation. Remember earlier in the year, we read Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden's letter to the United States. Um, and he ex explained from his point of view that he didn't believe Americans could be innocent at any level because we're a democracy and we vote for the people that represent us. And so if our representatives are, you know, committing atrocities outside of our borders, um, you know, although I believe Osama bin Laden's viewpoint is very extreme, um, you know, there might be some level of accountability and responsibility. So it is really, really important as citizens and, and people of this country to be aware of what our representatives are doing, you know, beyond these borders. Okay, so moving on. Uh, major goals of foreign policy. So for the first one, national security, that's going to be um, pretty universal for any country. Um, you know, their <laughs> security is, is really important to them, making sure that, you know, the government and the people are safe. Um, the rest of them, though, they might be a little more U.S. Uh, specific, uh, promoting peace. You know, it's, it's really, war is not good for anybody, okay? Um, that much we know for certain. And the more that technology develops and, and things of that nature, uh, people are just going to get hurt. Um, so a good segue, though, with promoting peace is, is spreading democracy. You know, it's it's a very core value of, of Americans that, that, you know, we believe democracy is um, the more preferable 
system of government. Um, you know, p- people are less and, and governments are less likely to go to war with each other um, if it's people kind of making the decisions and, and not like this tyrannical government. Uh, promoting trade. You know, we live in a world where needs and wants are kind of unlimited. And unfortunately, the resources are, are very limited. So, you know, the U.S. isn't going to have everything that it needs within its own border. Unfortunately, we're going to have to work and cooperate with other countries and, and create uh, mutually beneficial relationships with other nations to, to make sure that, you know, everybody has what they, they need and, and we can get people most of what they want. I don't think you can ever get um, everybody everything that they want. And lastly on the um, slide is going to be providing aid. So the U.S. is actually the um, biggest contributor in, in providing aid to uh, countries throughout the world. So, you know, weird flex, but okay. Um, yeah, we're really happy about that too, I think. Um, you know, some of these lesser developed nations, and, and you might have read this um, from, from the assignment last week, but some of these nations, you know, they aren't even, or they're just becoming industrialized. And with climate change, it's not really fair that some of these countries um, industrialize so much sooner. And now with climate change and things, so, um, and that's not the only reason either, right, that, that we would provide aid. But um, it's very, very interesting to see developed countries work um, and try to build up lesser developed ones. Um, yeah, so this is actually getting into a slideshow that I want to show you um, a different day. Um, I'm going to take you a timeline take you through a timeline of U.S. Um, policy throughout its history. But again, we'll save that for a different day. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This was my first time. Um, you know, I kind of feel like George Bush right here in this picture, the tinkerer trying to set up this video and, and get it edited and, and things of that nature. So I appreciate you bearing with me. Um, Again, I, and I hope you like the video, uh, but reach out. Tell me if you got any um, tips or, or if you want to, you know, um, critique me. That'd be cool. Uh, but yeah, take care, guys. Miss you.